So this video is dealing with our asynchronous day on March uh, 5th, Friday, March 5th. And what we're gonna be doing is going to be something called sinusoidal modeling. And it sounds kind of scary, but all it is is modeling situations using a sine graph or a cosine graph. So first, before we get started with this, I just wanna make sure everyone feels comfortable with a basic sine and a basic cosine graph. And so I have a unit circle here and going around the unit circle, the only points that we're plotting when we do our sine and cosine are five points. One, two, three, four, five, back to here. Now, when we're dealing with cosine, okay, cosine is the X coordinate and sine is the Y coordinate. So I kind of try to color code. Here I wrote cosine X, sine X. Um, all of these in red are your X coordinates, which are your cosine. All the ones in blue are your Y coordinates or your sines. Okay, so as we're going around the unit circle, let me start with cosine. Uh, well, let me first stay with, the, stay with the points. So here, our very first point on the unit circle is one comma zero. Okay, because here this is zero, zero at the origin. I'm coming out one comma zero. This one here is zero comma one. Negative one comma zero. Zero comma negative one. And we're back to one comma zero. And so we go around the unit circle this direction. So we're going to do our 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, and back to 1, 0. Now, when we're focused on doing the cosine graph, I'm focused on just plotting um, the, the x-coordinates. I apologize, the x-coordinates, the ones in red. So cosine, I'm going to start with 1, 0, negative one, zero, and back to one. Those are the five. So again, one, zero, negative one, zero, one. So let me write those over here. One, oops, let me get the right color. So one, zero, negative one, zero, one. Okay, and again, I'm getting the one, zero, negative one, zero, and a one. And now I'm gonna do the same with the sign, but I'm gonna be going around looking at the blue, the second coordinate, the Y coordinate. So that's gonna be a zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna be doing for my, my um, sign. So again, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. So let me write that here. So zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. So my cosine is going to start, um, would I say high to high or low to low? Because our, the highest the sine graph will ever go or our cosine graph is one, the lowest it will ever go is negative one unless the amplitude is adjusted, okay? And then it's gonna go that much, um, that amplitude high or that amplitude low. So when I'm graphing this, I think about high, low, and like our zeros. So when I graph cosine, I think I'm going high to high, okay? So what I mean by that is when I'm graphing it, okay, here's my high, here's my low, okay? I've got one mark, two marks, three marks, four marks, five marks, okay? And so I'm gonna start high to high because that's my one and one I just circled a second ago. Um, and then halfway in between, okay, halfway in between is my negative one. 
is my negative one. So that's going to be down here. And then halfway in between these values is going to be my zero. See, halfway between these was my zero. So this is going to be my zero. And then halfway between these is going to also be my zero. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pen. So again, I go high to high. Halfway in between is my low. And then halfway in between those are my zero and my zero. And then I have my cosine graph. So your cosines will be high to high. And when would they be low to low? They would be low to low if I had a negative in front. So let's say I put in pink down here, y equal negative cosine x. So what would happen is instead of starting at my one to one high to high, I would start low to low. And then halfway in between would be my high. And then in between that would still be my zeros. And that would be my graph. Okay, so anytime I know high to high or low to low, I think cosine. Okay, now my sine graph. Okay, my sine graph, what's happening here is I am going zero to zero. So if I'm starting at zero and ending at zeros, like if I know my middles, I know my middles, I know the start of my, my, my zero, I think sine. So when I graph sine, Okay, let me, let me uh, erase this here for a sec. So when I graph sine, I am thinking about, um, let me just get this set up again. Here we've got our one, which is our high and our negative one, which is our low. And we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and that would take me out, out to two pi. And so for these ones, what I'm thinking when I'm doing these graphs, I am thinking that I go zero to zero, okay? Halfway in between a zero. And then halfway in between that is gonna be my high and my low. If my sign is positive, I'm gonna go high first, then low. And that would be my graph. Okay, now if, and here I'll do this in an orange color, okay, so if I wanted to do negative sine of x, I am still going to start zero to zero, I'm still going to have zero halfway, but instead of in between my two, my first two zeros going up, I'm going to do my low, then the other one's going to be my high. And that would be my sign. So again, if I know high to high, high to high, or low to low, I think cosine. If I know like my zeros, okay, then I think sign. Um, just trying to give us this idea before we start doing these graphs, okay? Um, something else I want to just make sure we understand, um, and I'm going to show us just a sine graph and a cosine graph on an actual graph is the following. So um, I am using Desmos, okay, I've adjusted the x-axis so it's in radians, you'll notice that I've got pi halves, pi, three pi halves, two pi. So if I put in y equal, let's say sine of x. Okay, so here's sine of x. And what I, first I want you to understand is this graph is going to go forever and ever in the negative x direction and forever and ever in the positive x direction. So we are just graphing one cycle when we are graphing it. Okay, so for example, we are starting at our zero going, uh, that's our high, here's our low back to zero. This from zero to two pi would be one period, one cycle for us, okay? So I can adjust this here. So I have um, zero, I'm um, just trying to get my less than or equal to x, less than or equal to two pi. 
And now you see that I have it just from zero to two pi. So this is what we're used to doing. Um, but this graph does continue going forever and ever, okay? So when I have a particular sine graph, if I don't want to start here, maybe I know the value here and I have a negative sign starting here and I would end here. Um, this also could be a cosine graph because if I start here, this would be my high to high, halfway in between is my low, and then in between those is my zero and my zero. And let me put in y equal one, that would be my high, y equal negative one, that would be my low. Here, I'll have it be red also. And then my zero, y equals zero, that's my center. This is my vertical shift always. This is my amplitude going up one, going down one, okay? And so when I'm doing this, Again, right now, I said that, hey, this is a regular sign. I'm starting here. I'm going up and going back down to low and back here. That's a full sine graph. But I could really think of this as a cosine from here to here. That would really be a cosine. Now, this cosine is not starting at zero. It's starting at pi half, so we have a phase shift. So we need to decide where we're starting on our graph because sine and cosine graphs really are the same, but they are shifted from each other, okay? Now, when I say they're the same, I could write this graph as a cosine graph. So you'll notice that again, at pi halves is my high, too high here. So if I did a shift here and I did y is equal to cosine, cosine of, Sorry, cosine of, and I'm gonna shift it to pi half. So x minus pi halves, let me get my pi. Pi halves. You'll see that the graph was black. That was my sine graph. This is my cosine graph and you see it's on top of it. Okay, now my normal cosine doesn't have a one here my normal cosine has a one here. Okay, so if I did just plain old cosine x, you see that my one is here. I start at one, zero, negative one, zero, one, high to high. My sine, which is the black one here, is zero, one, zero, negative one back to zero. So my sign is starting at zero, ends at zero, halfway in between is zero. And then in between these is my high and in between these is my low. My cosine starts high to high, halfway in between is my low and halfway in between those are my zero and my zero. Okay, so that's just kind of an intro just to understanding that sine and cosine graphs can be written in either form. You can write it as a cosine, you can write it as a sine depending on where you want to start in the graph. Um, and so that's what we're going to be practicing with this worksheet today. So now what I would like for you guys to have is the worksheet that is our classwork for today. It is called chapter nine, C9, CW10 modeling worksheet number one. And it should look like this, okay? And this is on sinusoidal modeling. So in this problem, um, we have a Ferris wheel uh, as you ride the Ferris wheel, your distance from the ground varies sinusoidally. Okay, that means like sine and a cosine graph with time. So your distance from the ground 
and time is what we're going to be plotting. Okay. When the last seat is filled and the Ferris wheel starts, your seat is at a position shown in the figure below. Let T be the number of seconds that have passed and that have elapsed since the Ferris wheel started. Um, you find that it takes you three seconds to reach the top, 43 feet above the ground, and that the wheel makes a revolution once every eight seconds. The diameter of the wheel is 40 feet. Sketch a graph of the sinusoid and write an equation. Then we're gonna answer some questions. Okay, and down here they have a just a picture of the uh, Ferris wheel. Okay, so when I do these graphs, um, what I would recommend doing is drawing in your highest your graph is going to go, the lowest the graph your is going is going to go, and halfway in between is is your center is your zeros. Okay, is your vertical shift. So on this Ferris wheel. Okay, at three seconds, it says you reach the top, which is 43 feet above the ground. Okay, and we know that the diameter of the wheel is 40 feet. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to draw a graph. Okay. And I don't need to go below the x-axis because this is a Ferris wheel and it's not going underground, okay? So I'm gonna have something like this. Now they told us that the highest it goes is 43, okay? That is, reaches the top at 43 feet above the ground. Now it also tells us that the diameter of the Ferris wheel is 40. So what that means, let me just sketch down here for a second, okay? What that means is this diameter from here to here is 40. And we know that this up here, the highest, highest, highest it reaches was that 43. And that this is 40 for the diameter. So that means that the lowest it's gonna go is three. And again, I know that this is 43, they told us. We know that the diameter is 40. So basically, if this is 43, 40 below is the lowest it's gonna go, that puts me at three, okay? So this is gonna be my high, this is going to be my low. So let me draw, well, first let me write that in. So this is going to be at uh, three. Now, halfway in between, Okay, now halfway in between. So to do that math, I'm just gonna do that math down here. To figure out halfway in between anything, add them together and divide by two because that is going to be an average. Okay, add them together and divide by two. We want the average of them. I'm just gonna move this down a little bit. Okay, so I am going to get 46 divided by two, which is 23. So this center is 23. So right here, um, this is 23, not to here. It's 20 to here and 20 to here. It is 23 from here all the way to the ground. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm gonna do what I've been doing lately. Um, I'm gonna draw in my high here. I'll do it in blue do it in kind of a faint. So my high is going to be at this 43. My low is going to be at this three. And then we figured out where that center is. Sometimes you're going to know the center, sometimes you're not. But if you know your high and your low, average them. It has to be halfway in between because you're going the same above and below that center always. So I'll do that center in green because that's what I've been doing lately. So this is my vertical shift, okay? That is my vertical shift, okay? And what's gonna happen here is what I know so far, okay, I'm just gonna jot some things down. Let me get it. So what I know so far, I'm just gonna jot some things and then uh, I'm going to uh, give myself some space here but I know that my vertical shift is 
is 23 because that's the center. And if I look and see how high am I going from here to here? Well, from 23 to 43 is 20, okay? From 23 to three is 20. That's my amplitude. I'm going 20 above and 20 below. So that's my amplitude. So my amplitude is 20. So when they're asking us to write an equation, I already know my amplitude and I also know my vertical shift. Okay, so I know that so far. Okay, so let me just get rid of this. Sorry, I didn't want to erase my line. I'll get that line back in. Okay, so let me just put my low back in. Okay, so we've got that so far. Um, let's see what else do we know. Um, so we kind of know where our highs and our lows and our middle is. What we need to know is now how to scale like the x-axis, right? Now on these problems, it's going to be slightly different. Your x-axis is not going to be like necessarily pi and two pi and things like that. These are numbers, normal numbers, okay? We're dealing with time. So in this particular problem, it gave us this bit of information right here. They said that um, you find it takes you three seconds to reach the top of 43. So we know three seconds is when they, we were at 43, okay? So that's gonna be my start. I'm gonna have that be my start. So let me put that in here. Okay, so let me get my three. Okay, so this is gonna be three. Okay, and, and this is going to be seconds. And this is going to be um, on the y-axis, uh, distance above ground. Let's see if I can, hold on. Distance above Round. That's what these numbers are representing. So those are representing distance above ground. The x-axis is dealing with seconds, okay? So I have a point that I can plot. I'm gonna plot it in pink, make it nice and bright and big. Um, I know that at three, okay, let me, at three, we are at a max of 43, okay? I know that. Now, honestly, I'm gonna to have to finish scaling the rest of this, but I could draw this graph, okay? I could draw this graph, let me do this. Okay, I'm gonna to need to know the values, but, hold on, sorry. But I've got my one mark at three, so that's one, two, three, four, five. I don't know what those markings are, but I, I know that I'm starting at three comma 43, and so I really could truly graph the rest of these points. Um, this one's going to be, so sine goes, so this is actually, I would do this as a cosine. Why am I saying I do this as a cosine? I'm at a high. So let's go to high, high to high, that's a cosine, okay? Signs would have started at my zero and ended at zero. That's not what's happening here. I'm starting at high to high, which means halfway in between these is going to be my low. And halfway in between these is going to be my zero. And then halfway in between these is going to be my zero. And so I can sketch this. Now, this is not an acceptable graph yet because I do need to, figure out where I'm ending, okay? I need to know where am I ending? So I know I'm starting at three, what is this? Well, that's going to be whatever my period is added on to three. So let's see, did they say what the period is here? Did they give us any of that information? So the one thing that I noticed that they said here, and let me highlight this, they said here, that the wheel makes a revolution every eight seconds. So a revolution would be a complete circle. That would be one cycle, okay? So we know that every eight seconds, 
it makes one revolution. So that means my period, whoops, my period, hold on, let me grab my pen. My period is going to be, my period is going to be eight seconds. Okay, because that's one revolution. So what I don't want you to do is come here and go, oh, this is eight. No, 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 that's not eight. It's eight more. I need to add eight on. So this is 11. That's an 11, okay? Because I start at three and then eight seconds later, I've done one revolution. So I start at three, end at eight. And then if you want, you can average those. Three plus 11 is 14 divided by two is seven. Three plus seven is 10 divided by two is five. Seven plus 11 is 18 divided by two is nine. So you see it actually ended up being three, five, seven, nine, 11. Doesn't always end up being nice numbers like that, but this one was. So that's our graph. Okay, that's our graph. Now they want us to come up with an equation. Okay, so for our equation, I'm going to write that equation. Here, I'm going to highlight where I'm going to write it so you guys can see. I'm going to write it right here. Okay, that's where I'm going to write my equation. So what I know is it's going to be y equal and I am going to use cosine because I know high to high, that's cosine, okay? If I knew from a zero to my other zeros, which I could do, I could do this as starting here if I wanted to and make it a negative sign, but it's easier just to go from here to here because I have all of these values. Okay, so this is gonna be high to high, which is cosine. Now we need an amplitude. We said that the amplitude is 20 because I'm going 20 above this and 20 below this. Okay, so I'm going to have 20 and it's a positive 20 because I'm starting at the highs. Negative would be if I started at the lows. Cosine, now my B. So remember your B is how many cycles you have within two pi distance. We don't have this as two pi. So I'm gonna kind of go backwards. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna adjust this for a second. I know that my period is equal to eight seconds. Okay. Now remember period is two pi over B. I want my B. That's what I'm trying to find. So I'm going to take two pi over B and set equal to eight because that's what my period is. I am going to cross multiply. I get two pi is equal to eight B. Remember I'm solving for B. So I'm going to divide by eight. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So I'm gonna get two pi over eight and I can reduce that to pi force is my B. Now we're used to having our B be a normal number, but if your X axis or your period is normal numbers, you're gonna end up with a B that is a pi. Okay, that's, that's what's going to happen, okay? Um, but you can just always, again, take the formula for period, which is 2 pi over b, set it equal to the period to figure out what the b is. So our b is pi force. So I'm going to come up here, and for my b, I'm going to go pi force, okay? And let me just jot this down as a reminder. Remember, this is a cosine b, x minus h plus k. That's our general equation. So my a is my amplitude. My b, again, we know that our period is equal to 2 pi over b for sines and cosines. So that's how I used, found my b. I knew the period and I went backwards. Now, the next thing I need to do is talk about this phase shift, that X minus H. And so I look to see where we started. I want to start it here at this high, okay? Because I'm doing it as a cosine. And that's at three, okay? 
So I'm going to do X minus three. And then my K is my vertical shift. That's this green line I drew, okay? That's my air quote zeros. That's where my center is. So my phase, my vertical shift, sorry, is the 23 plus 23. And that's your equation. That's your equation. So again, on A, they wanted the graph and they wanted the equation, okay? Now on part B, it says, what is the lowest you go as the Ferris wheel turns? And why is this number greater than zero? So as we're going in this on this Ferris wheel, the lowest we ended up with at was three feet. Okay, so the lowest, here I'll write it in pink, lowest equals three feet. Now, why is that greater than zero? Well, you're on a Ferris wheel. You don't want to have the Ferris wheel be hitting the ground or going beneath the ground. So that's why that number is greater than zero. Okay, that's why that number is greater than zero. Um, is greater than zero because um, don't want to hit the ground. Okay, you don't want to hit the ground on the Ferris wheel. Make it a little scarier though. And that's our answer to that question, okay? Okay, so the next one, um, steamboat problem, okay? So this is a steamboat. Mark Twain sat on the deck of a river steamboat. And here, let me make this bigger. I don't know why I haven't done this earlier. Okay, there you go. Um, so Mark Twain sat at the deck of a, steam, of a river steamboat. As the paddle wheel turned, a point on the paddle blade moved in such a way that its distance D from the water surface was a sinusoidal function. That just means you can write it as a sine or a cosine uh, function of time. When his stopwatch read four seconds, the point was at its highest. Okay, I'm gonna just four seconds, highest 16 above the water surface. Um, the wheel's diameter is 18 feet, 18 feet. And I'm just going to erase this one here and have it not be writing over the words. Okay. Um, and it's above the water surface. We need to know where that is. Um, and it completed a revolution every 10 seconds. So one revolution is one cycle. Okay. Um, so, th so that would be like a period for us for these graphs. Okay. So let me get started. Okay. I like to start with my highs and lows, okay? Now, my highest is going to be 16, okay? So let me write that in, that's 16. Um, I don't, they didn't say where the lowest was, but they did say that the diameter is 18. So if my diameter is 18, that means I need to go 18 below this. So that's gonna put me underwater, okay? Which is fine, this is a boat. So that paddle is gonna be underwater. So um, my high is going to be 16. Here's the water. My, my diameter, again, my diameter is going, trying to write in a different color. My diameter is going 18 down from this. So that's going to put me two below the surface. So I'm going to be down here at negative two. So the highest is going to be at 16. The lowest is going to be is two feet underwater. Okay. This is the water right here. Um, now, if this is 16 and this is negative two, I need to figure out where the middle is. So I am going to do what I did before. I'm going to take, I'm just going to do it right here, 16 plus negative two divided by two, that's gonna be 14 divided by two, which is seven. So my center is going to be seven, okay? And let's just double check that math. The difference between these is nine. The difference between these is nine. That is my center. This is my vertical shift, 
Okay, the distance I'm going from here to here, which is nine, that's going to be my amplitude. Again, here to here, nine, that's going to be my amplitude. Okay, so let me get rid of that 18 I wrote there. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to right here, write my equation, bits and pieces of my equation. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna write my equation right here. And um, I know I have a y equal, okay? I'm gonna need to decide if I wanna do a sine or a cosine, okay? But I do know I have an amplitude of seven, okay? It might be a positive seven, it might be a negative, sorry, not seven, I apologize. Sorry, seven, that's my vertical shift. So at the very end, I'm going to have a plus seven because that's my vertical shift. Okay. This is my center. And then I'm going nine above and nine below. So I'm going to have a nine, maybe a negative nine, depending on, on how I want to set up my graph, but definitely absolute value nine. Okay. So now let's see what else do I know. When his stopwatch read, for seconds, he was at the highest. So I'm going to be starting with my four. Okay. And that is going to be uh, my highest. Now, let me just again, sketch in my high is here at 16. My low is here at negative two. My um, vertical shift or my center is at seven. That's where my normal zeros would be. And again, the distance between the green and the blue here is nine and here nine. That's why my amplitude is nine because I'm going nine above, nine below. This seven is the center. I've shifted the graph up seven. Normally my zeros would be here on the X axis, which in this case would be the water. Okay, but it got shifted up seven. That's why my vertical shift here is a plus seven. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to plot my first point that they said at four seconds, we are 16 at a high of 16. Okay, now again, I even if I don't know all of my values yet, what I do know is this. I've got one mark here, two, three, four, five. And if this is my high, this is gonna be a high, okay? Because this is a sine or a cosine. In this case, I'm going to go high to high, okay? So let me do that. So again, I had my high here. I'm gonna have my high here. Let me make that a little fatter. Okay, I'm gonna have my high here. Now halfway in between these is going to be my low. And halfway in between these is going to be my zero. And halfway in between these is going to be my zero. So again, for if I start with my high, I'm going to go high to high cosine. Halfway in between these is my low. Okay. And then halfway in between these would be my zero. And then halfway in between my low and my high. Again, we're, we're saying halfway like this direction. Halfway in between here is my zero. And then I'm going to connect this. And that's my graph. Okay, so I am going to do this as a cosine because I have high to high. So let me get my cosine written in here. Okay, so I know it's gonna be cosine and I might need to move my seven here or at least maybe my nine. So I know I'm going to have nine cosine. Okay. And again, I'm going to have a plus seven at the end. 
um, I need to figure out where this graph ends so I can figure out my period. Well, I know that this graph takes 10 seconds to do a revolution. That means my period is 10. So I'm gonna do a little more math over here, okay? So if my period equals 10 seconds and period is two pi over B, so that basically equals 10, I cross multiply 2B, sorry, two pi equals 10B, divide by B, I mean by 10 to get my B by itself, I get two pi over 10 equals B. So I get basically B over five, sorry, pi over five is B. So that's gonna be my B that goes right here. Okay, so remember, y equal a times, that looks like a nine, which it's a nine in this problem, but I'm trying to write an a here, cosine of b, x minus h plus k. So now we're going to do that x minus h. And, um, and here, let me do this too. I need to also put where I end. We always want to know start and end in a graph. So if one cycle, one revolution, basically one period is 10. I'm going to go 10 away from this. So if I'm at four and I go 10 away, I'm now at 14. Okay. Now, if I want to label those other values, I can. I can take four and 14, 18 divided by two is nine. Okay. Four and nine is 13 divided by two is 6.5. Um, between nine and 14 would be 23. And that is going to be an 11.5. So this one, we didn't get all nice values. We don't always, okay? But again, my start was four. My revolution was 10 seconds, so we went 10 beyond, which is 14. Okay, so now when I'm trying to do my, my phase shift here, this x minus h, where did we start? We started at four, so this is an x minus four because four will make that zero. And then remember that vertical shift was that plus seven, okay, right up here, right, that plus seven. Okay, and that's your equation. So now they're gonna ask us to use that equation for this. So it says, how far does the surface, how far above the surface was the point when Mark's stopwatch read five seconds? Now, you know how in the past I used to say, make sure your calculator's in degrees, not radians. This time, make sure your calculator is in radians. Okay, so you want it in radians. Now I'm going to do this on Desmos. So let me get my Desmos up. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on the graphing calculator first. Again, you wanna make sure that you have it in not degree, radian, because we have pi in these equations, right? So um, I am going to go to mode. I'm going to come down to radian, okay? And now, for the five seconds right here, what they want is five seconds. How far above the surface was the point when his stopwatch read five seconds and then 17 seconds? So I'm gonna be putting five in here to the, for this equation. So I'm gonna go nine cosine, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do alpha, alpha y equal, okay? Alpha y equal, and then I'm gonna hit number one or just hit enter. And now I can type in a fraction, okay? And I'm gonna do pi. Pi is right over here above your raise to a power button, okay? So I am going to do pi, you have to do second first, okay? Over five. Um, and then I need a parentheses around my five minus four, five minus four, okay? Close that parenthesis, plus seven. And you see 14.28 um, uh, feet. Okay, so here, let me, 
or I don't know why I'm moving my calculator. Let me move this. Okay, so this answer is 14.28 feet. Okay, so then I am going to do the same thing. Let me get it back up. Hold on. Um, but this time I'm going to put in 17 seconds. So here, let me just get a little bigger now. Okay, so again, um, to do that, I can, um, I can really just come up here and, whoops, hold on, get that back. I can just really um, arrow up and snag it and have it rewrite and then just change the number to 17, okay? But let me just retype it again, a little bigger, nine cosine. And then I am going to be using the alpha and the y equal to get a fraction. And then I want number one. And then I'm gonna do pi over five and the pi is right here, but you have to hit the blue second key. The blue second key is over here. Okay, so second and that, and that's gonna give me my pi over five, and then parenthesis, and then this time we want 17. So I'm gonna go 17 minus four, close that parenthesis, close the whole parenthesis, plus seven, and we see that's at four point, let's say 22, 4.22, okay, feet. So 4.22, 4.22 feet, okay? And let's just kind of see here at the five seconds. So four up at um, 16, 6.5 up at seven, and five, which is closer to four than 6.5. So it should be closer to 16 than seven. That makes sense. Okay, that makes sense um, for that. Now, what is the first positive value of time at which the point was at the water surface? At that time, was it going into or coming out of the water? Okay, so we want to know when is the first positive value of when it was um, at the water's surface? Okay, so for this, we basically want to know when does this equation equal zero, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do this on the graphing calculator, okay? So let me get the graphing calculator up again. Let me make it bigger. So what I'm gonna do this time, let me focus this, is this time I'm going to put this into my y equal. So I'm gonna to go to y equal, and I'm going to put nine cosine of, um, hold on, sorry, I wanted it as my fraction, sorry. So nine cosine um, alpha y equal to get my fraction of pi over five. And then this is going to be an x. And whenever we put an x in, you use this x right here. Okay, that's the x we use. So I'm going to use that x minus um, four, sorry, it was minus, yeah, four, it was four. Close my parenthesis, close my parenthesis, plus seven, okay? Now, um, I before I graph this, I'm gonna go to my window, okay? My window, right here, window. And I'm going to scale it to look like my graph that we drew, okay, so my x, Let's go from zero for my x to, um, I think ours went to what, 14, okay? Uh, by ones is fine. Now my y's, it goes below surface. So I'm gonna say it was negative two, it was the lowest, let's say negative five. And we went all the way up to, for this one, hold on, let me, we went up to 16, okay? We went up to 16. So, get it to focus again. Okay, so I am going to go, let's say up to 20, that way I'm a little beyond that. By ones is fine. And then I am going to hit graph. 
Okay. And here is my graph. Okay. Sorry, this is my other document camera. It's a little, if let's see, I don't think if I turn on the light, it'll be better. No, it's worse. Okay. Okay, so there's our sine graph. Now we want to know where it's zero. So one way to do it on here, and then I'll show you how to do it on the Desmos, is I can go and um, I'm going to go put in y, I'm going to go to y equal again. And I am going to, you know, hold on, let me do this. I'm going to go back to the graph. I'm going to do second and calculate. Second, second and calculate. Okay, second and calculate. And I am going to come down to zero, zero. Okay, and I want to find a zero. And this is asking me for a left bound and then a right bound. Okay, so a zero is like where it crosses the x axis. So I'm going to come here a little beyond this. Okay, so I'm going to come down here. I want to be like below and above. Okay, so my left. And then I'm going to arrow. And I'm above. Okay, I'm way above, but that's okay. Put that as my right. It takes a guess. And then I hit enter. And it jumps down here to my zero, which it says that it's going to be 0 0.08 um, seconds. When it's, and you'd see it's coming out of the water. This one would have been coming into the water. And so I'm going to put 0 0.08. Okay. So that's a little more difficult to do. Um, let me also show you how to do the same process on Desmos. Okay. So I'm just going to Desmos, regular Desmos. Okay. You do want to come here to the wrench and change to radians, okay? Make sure it's in radians. Uh, usually it defaults to radians, but just make sure. And then I'm gonna put my equation in here. So that was y equal nine cosine, and I can either write cosine, or if I come here under functions, I do have it listed also, okay? Um, cosine of, and we had pi, so let me grab my pi, pi over five. Okay, so here, I gotta be careful with this. You gotta pay attention when you're typing it in. I'm gonna go parenthesis, pi over five, close my parenthesis. So let me just get out of this, close my parenthesis. Um, now I have to be careful here. So I'm actually gonna put a, another parenthesis because this pi fifths is going to be multiplying with the quantity x minus four, okay? And then I have my plus seven. So let me get out of this and I'm gonna zoom down and you see our graph, okay? And you see if I click on this, a nice thing with Desmos, is it gives me the highs. So the high is four comma 16. It gives me these lows. See how it's down at negative two, nine, negative two, and so on. Okay, four, six, 14, 16 was another high. Now we want to know when it's zero. And all these little gray dots here, these are zeros. Okay, we want this zero because we want the first one. So right here, this is the first time it's coming out of the water, 0.08. Um, two, because this x-axis is the water, okay? This would be the second time, third time, and so on. So it's a little easier with the Desmos. Um, and let me, let me type it in again. Let me see if I do y equal nine cosine. Um, let's see if I do it, um, I'm gonna do my pi, hold on. Um, I'm going to do my pi 
divided by five parenthesis x minus four, four plus seven. Okay, so I can also type it like this. Okay, I don't need all those extra parentheses. So just as long as you are being careful when you're putting in your division sign. Okay. So you see that I put 0 0.08 seconds and that's coming out of the water. So I know this is kind of a long process. Um, they really do get easier as you do it. Pay attention to drawing in your high, your low, your middle. Sometimes you might know your middle and they might tell you how high to go above and below. Sometimes you might know your high and your low and then you average them to get your middle, okay? Um, that very first problem, we knew our high and we knew a diameter. So we knew that it was 40 diameter. So I basically knew I'm going 40 below, which was a three. So figure out your high, your low, your middle, figure out where your start is. And a lot of these, sometimes they might start you at a zero. Sometimes they do. If so, you sign. A lot of them start, start you at a high or at a low. And figure out what your high is, okay? Figure out where that value is. And then from there, figure out the period. And a lot of times they'll talk about a revolution or a complete cycle. And so in this case, the revolution was every eight seconds. So if it, this was at three seconds and every eight is a full revolution, I went eight more, which is 11. And we always have one, two, three, four, five marks. And your cosine starts high to high. Halfway in between is your low. Okay, halfway between the high and the low is your zero. Okay, and your zero. So your homework is going to be basically what would have been the backside of this worksheet. Um, so try your best on it. Okay. Um, I think if you guys just focus on high, medium, low, um, and where you're starting and ending, the one thing you want to remember is that when you're talking about period, period is equal to two pi over B. And so when they tell you, hey, your revolution is eight seconds, that's your period. So I take two pi over B, set that equal to my eight to figure out my B. Okay, so good luck on this and I'll be seeing you guys next week.